Okay, class, today we're going to talk about comparing data displayed in box plots. So here I have drawn a picture of a box plot, or we call it box and whisker. Okay, so as you see here, I've labeled each one of the whiskers. That's our minimum and our maximum here. Our median is the line that's inside the box. The beginning of, of the box is called our lower quartile. The end of the box is our upper quartile. And I left out one more thing. The entire box is actually the inner quartile range. So I'm going to write I Q R on the inside of that. Now, as in the previous video, uh, this is the five number summary here. When you have your data, you have your minimum, your lower quartile, median, upper quartile, and your maximum. Okay, so now we're gonna look at an example of a block, box plot here. And we're going to, this is with similar variability. So the box plot shows the distribution of days spent in a national park by two different groups of visitors. So as normal, we're gonna look at this um, box plot and just visually see, we can notice something here. So group A, here's group A's data and here's group B's data. And this is the number of days spent at the national park. Now, A part says compare the shapes of the box plots. Okay, so we're gonna comp compare the shapes. So if I'm looking at these two here, I can see that the position and the lengths appear to be similar. So they're not, you don't have the, the boxes here, the interquartile ranges are similar. They're in the same position. Okay, and the lengths of them, the max and the min, are about similar. So in both plots, the rightness of the whiskers is shorter than the leftmost. And that's in both of them. So this, the right side of the whisker in both of them are shorter than the one that's on the left. So we're going to write that down here under comparing the shapes of the box plots. So we're going to say the position and the lengths appear to be similar. So the positions and lengths appear to be similar. Okay, and we're going to say in both of them, the right whisker is shorter than the left whisker. So in both plots, the right whisker is shorter than the left whisker okay now whether you can remember this is by I think of a uh, cat and the whiskers so this would be the face and this this would be the whiskers coming out from the face so that's a way to remember it's a box of whisker plot okay so we just compare the shapes of the box and whiskers plot so now let's turn on the inside Looking at the same, the exact same box and whisker, okay? So now we're going to compare the centers, okay? So the centers we know is called the what? The median. So we're going to compare the medians of the box plots. So now we know that the medians are the, the lines that are in the, on the inside of the box, okay? So let's compare these two. So in group A, okay, group A's median lands 
on three. Okay, that's just as simple. See where it lands there. And group B is in between three and four, so the line in between three and four will be 3.5. Okay, so how can what, what can we say in comparison to this right here? We can say that group B's median is 3.5, which is higher, while group A has a median of three. So what this means is the median visitor, visitor in group B spends about a half a day longer at the park. Because if we subtract them, 3.5 minus 3, it's a half a day. It's 0.5. So we're going to write that down here. So group B has a higher median of 3.5. Okay. Comma. While group A has a median of three. So again, this means the median visitor. In group B, it's 0.5 or a half, write that in parentheses, a half a day longer at the park. Okay, and how I know that? Because these are the days spent at the park. Okay, now. Now we're going to compare the spreads, okay? So here when we're talking about the spreads, we're talking about the range. And in particular, we're talking about the interquartile range here, okay? And we know the interquartile range is, we're talking about the box. So we're gonna look at the beginning of the box, which is called lower quartile, end of the box, upper quartile. We're gonna subtract those two numbers, okay? So let's look here. So it looks like the box shows the interquartile range, and each box is similar, right? So group A, let's see what their, how would I calculate group A's? So let's look and see where the beginning of the box is. So the beginning of the box is at 2, and the end of the box, okay, it's in between 4 and this line right here. So if in between 4 and 5 is 4.5, Right in between 4 and 4.5 is 4.25. So 4.25 is the end of the box for group A. Okay, so now to figure that out, I'm going to do 4.25 minus 2. So I get 2.25. Okay, so group A equals 2.25 days. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. And before I do that, I'm going to say the box shows in a quartile range. Okay. All right. So I'm going to say group A equals 2.25 days. So now what I want you to do is figure out what group B is and compare the whiskers, okay? Okay, so if we look at group B, the beginning of the box is two and at the end is four. So we'll just subtract those four minus two. So group B is two days, okay? Now, if we look at the whiskers, the whiskers are similar in lengths. Okay, with group A, they're having a slightly more extreme value than group B. Okay, so the whiskers are similar lengths. Okay. 
Okay, but group A. is slightly more extreme than group B. And we're talking about values. And we're talking about the values here. Okay. All right, so we just did with similar variabilities. Now we're going to go over here and do with different, different variabilities. Okay, so now we have a different scenario here. It says the box plots show, show the distribution of the number of DVDs sold weekly by two different stores. Okay, so here now we have a little shift in our data. Okay, over here on the other side, our data was pretty much together here. All right, so now it's shifting to where... Our interquartile ranges are a little bit different. So this is the number of movie DVDs sold here, store A and store B. So now we're going to do the same thing we did on the other side. We're going to compare the shapes of the box plots. So I'm going to pause for just one second, and I want you to talk with your partner, and I want you to compare the shapes of the box plots, just like we did in the other one. Okay, so we're just looking at the shapes of them, okay? Let's look at store B. Okay, so if we're looking at the inner quartile range here, store B is a little bit longer than store A, okay? But store A's right whisker is a little bit long, longer, well, it's a lot longer than store B, okay? So we're going to write that down there. Store B, bo store B's, excuse me, this be a partial B. Store B's box is longer than store A, and store A's right whisker is much longer, Okay, so most of my data in store B is shift. It's shifted this way and it's a little bit longer, spread out a little bit longer. Okay, so now let's look at the centers. And we know the centers we're comparing in the quartile ranges. All right, so now I'm going to pause here and I want you to talk with your partner and just compare the centers. Okay. Okay, so the centers, the centers for store A, which is the median. So for store A, all we're doing is looking at, remember, it's always the line that's inside the box. So for store A, the median would be 200, and for store B, the median would be about 350. So we're going to write that down. Store A, store A's median is 200 and store B store B's median is 350 so that's what you and your partner should have come up with now also we can say that stores A store A's median is close to store B's first quartile okay so we can say 50% of store A's weekly sales were less than 75% of store B's weekly sales. Okay. Now let's look at the spreads. So the spreads are going to be my inner quartile. And that's right median here on centers. Okay. So we're going to look at the spreads. So I'm going to pause here. I want you to take a minute to talk with your partner and compare those interquartile ranges for store A and store B. Okay, so there are a few things here um, about the spreads that we can determine here. All right, so with the spreads for store A, all right, so remember, it's, it's, we're taking the whatever's at the beginning of the box, it's a, uh, the beginning and the end of the box, and we're subtracting those numbers. So in store A, we're doing 300 minus 150. Okay, so their inner quartile range is 150. We subtract that. For store B, we're taking the beginning and the end. So it's 400 minus 225, which will give me 175. Also here, we can say that store A has a much longer upper whisker. Okay, and then store B's box is further up here on the number line. Okay, 
So now, out of all that, here we go. Store A's inner quartile range is 150 DVDs. Store B's inner quartile range is 175 DVDs. Now, we just said store B has a slightly greater inner quartile range, okay? Because it's at 175 and this is at 150, okay? Store, store B is more consistent because their box is higher on the number line, okay? So they're more consistent. They don't have, look at their whiskers. Their data is, seems to be compacted together, okay? So they're a little bit more consistent. Box is a little bit longer, and the quartile range is a little bit longer, so they're more consistent, and it's not the data is not too spread out. Okay, so we just did box plots, comparing data displayed in box plots. Okay, and once again, here's that shot of that box plot there. All right, there we go.